And there's not like, you know, some some American horror where there's some backwood kind of like sort of mutant family of like of hillbilly people who have inbred for generations or whatever. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Phil Marriott. We have got a movie review today, a horror film called Homebound, out in cinemas on the 1st of April and on digital on the 4th of April. Here to review it with me is my good friend Paul, who actually I saw the last time was at All to Doomages. I think that was the last time we saw each other, wasn't it? Yeah, great gig. Thanks for that. That was an amazing night out. Uh, have you seen them live before? No, never, never. It was really great. Were you a fan in the 80s? Probably a little bit young when they were active in the 80s. See, um, I keep forgetting you're a lot younger than me. I was born in 77, so I mean, I, I think they brought their last record out in 83 <laughs> or 84, wasn't it? I know, sorry. Yeah. No. So I remember them first time round. Yeah, I've since I've since heard a lot of them and, and always enjoyed them. And Claire Grogan was just amazing. I mean, the energy she had... She's fantastic. such a showwoman on stage. She really yeah. enjoys herself. You can tell that she's really into it. She's a big show off, she says on a, on a Twitter bio. She's great. And what, what was amazing is she did a few tracks from an upcoming album, which is like the first album in 35, 37 years or something. Yeah. And you wouldn't you wouldn't distinguish them from the old stuff. They just settle in, nestle in so nicely. You know, when sometimes, you know, artists who are big back in the day bring out new stuff and it's a bit like oh god just everyone goes to the bar so the movie today is homebound emerging from film london's microwave project i want to say microwave <laughs> doing nigella <laughs> the microwave uh, it's the feature scheme from film london um supported by the bfi where we go to quite often for all the festivals and bbc film as well so bbc film involved in this um it was an official selection at fantastic fest and beyond fest it's been getting some good reviews uh, it's a debut feature from Sebastian Godwin and it stars Ashling Loftus from A Discovery of Witches and Tom Goodman Hill. Do you remember him in Humans? Did you watch Humans? Yes, he's great. He's I really like him. He's really good because he's he's really cute and he's really likable, but they then managed to get him playing characters who are a bit of a shit and it kind of like works really well because I mean obviously anyone who's seen humans he does some naughty stuff in that and um but yeah he's really yeah he's really good typecast a little bit because here he goes again he's playing a bit of a baddie mm. or is he <laughs> the mystery just, just before we go on is micro wave is that still like having to make a film for 500 grand or was it 50 grand or i don't know like yeah i guess so because i mean it, it feels like a low budget film i think they've done a good job with it yeah. in terms of money because obviously they've done the best that they can do i guess yeah, I mean, I remember when Microwave was launched and it was kind of not long after, I mean, I did a, I took some time out and did an MA in producing and, and screenwriting and, everyone, you know, and, and then it was just learning a lot about sort of film funding and how to get stuff made in London and or the UK and obviously that was a thing and I think the first film they released was a horror called Mum and Dad that was, um, I don't know if you saw that, but that was a kind of like a sort of single location kind of nasty family horror type thing, but I think the rules of microwave is it's something really it's something like like really low budget like 100 grand or something like that this this would have been like 2009 so i would hope they've gone up a bit by then but i think that's the whole point maybe they've just taken that limitation off but it was kind of like they would give you that money but you couldn't it can kind of then that it couldn't be like you know because a lot of making a film is bringing finance together from lots of different sources so you couldn't still say right there's 500 grand from film london and then two million from another investor and whatever it had to then produce a film of that budget so ah and yeah. i guess it costs so much money to make even a small film i mean the money you just throw away stuff just within 10 10 minutes of filming i guess yeah and i think i think that's why i, I try to be kind in some of these reviews and particularly low budget stuff because to get a film made is so difficult just to get it the whole process of going through from optioning the script to then getting it where you want attaching people getting the timing right getting things together you know the shoot is incredibly expensive because you're basically fabricating a world or something just for that time it's it's not like taking a play into a theater where at least there's a stage already you're literally doing everything and then then after that, there's the editing and all the the, the sound and the color grading, and all the technical stuff, and then and then you still then need to sort of try and get the film out there. And there's a whole other thing about you know it getting released and getting into festivals, and is it going to get a distribu distributor get distribution? You know, some films will get made and be left on the shelf. So yeah, respect to 
a film like this that 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 is made low budget and, and makes it and it must be so frustrating as well when things don't necessarily work out and of course we've had covid the last couple of years the pandemic causing lots of problems with film releases and getting films made and you know and for all films just the the, the budgets have gone up regardless of any delays because of stopping stuff because of pe- crew and having covid but just all the testing and putting that all in and if you think about dressing rooms and different spaces and then having to have social distance in certain ways then again that that increases the amount of space you're having to use and all this is is cost so yeah it's it's really difficult so yeah everyone don't download illegal films buy your f- ticket buy your subscription <laughs> do whatever yeah, because, yeah listen to auntie paul to support the film industry yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or um or chucky gets it in fact chucky has got it because he's squished into the into the back of your bookcase there it's not chucky it's cabbage patch Carrie. oh that's the cabbage patch carry yeah because we saw her on yeah that's right on you, one of the previous videos she, sit, she she sits in this broken mirror ball <laughs> um, so yeah a bit Is that like, where she deserves to be? It's like a sort of very scary version of the, the child from Mandalorian in its little... <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so, freaking yeah. me out, to be completely yeah. honest. You might want to put her back in there, pl- plop her back in the bookcase. Yeah. <laughs> so these are two brothers. It's, it's Hugo and Sebastian Godwin. They're from St Albans. Uh, apparently they're inspired by Stanley Kubrick. And I kind of get that. I, I mean... When I first started watching this film, the first five minutes, it's got a very kind of creepy, wailing soundtrack. It's like a woman singing, and already you just know that something ominous is about to happen. It's got the kind of screechy violins, and it feels very Hammer, because when the titles came out, it was kind of blood-red lettering in a really Mm. old-fashioned style. And the, the film style felt like i mean i was gonna say hammer house of horror maybe maybe not so much a ham, hammer movie well, i guess some hammer movie so it felt quite old school yeah I, I can see that i mean i don't know how old these brothers are i'm guessing in their 40s i saw a picture today i don't think they're as old as me Pro- probably your age paul because as we've discussed you are quite a bit younger than me <laughs> i'm so- soon to be 45 so, yeah. <laughs> never ask a lady her age <laughs> <laughs> I, it's all right i profit it you didn't ask <laughs> so uh yeah the story is about a uh newlywed couple because the the wife in the car they're on their way to this mm. country house this kind of manor house to see the husband's ex-wife and children so his children and uh already you just know that something's not quite right because she she's about to take a ring off she doesn't want to kind of rub it in her face yeah and it's it's the first time she's the new wife is going to be meeting both the ex-wife and the children and yeah i think they capture that brilliant the very i think the very first shot she's in the passenger seat um hurriedly wrapping a present up yeah, and it's just, and and trying to like write a birthday card or something. It's just that typical thing of like you know you assume that maybe they're you know this house is in the country, maybe they've got a bit more of an urban lifestyle, and she's obviously a bit younger and whatever, and that she's already you know trying to impress, but but she's not even wrapped the present up yet and that kind of stuff. So I think that that tension of setting up that this could be quite an awkward encounter is is really well done it's right um, from the start isn't it of course when yeah. they get there you don't see the ex-wife because she sends a text message saying mm. bizarrely saying you know the kids are okay if you need to leave they'll be okay on their own which like from the start you just think hang on a minute there's like young kids but also a couple of teenagers as well yeah so i think that is there yeah. three or four kids four kids uh three maybe three so one of them is i think one of the one of the girls game Game of thrones i think she was in but i mean kids in films we've talked about this before kids in horror films i think you know it can either go one way or the other when it's done well like eden lake or the shining done brilliantly Mm. kids are great in Mm. horror films sometimes kids in horror films like sinister yeah you know with dodgy makeup on it's like they're not scary at all It, it depends i think they when they're doing that kind of like victorian gothic creepy the others the was it the the innocence that kind of thing i think that that kind of works but yeah. it did make me make me think of like um, more recent films featuring children obviously there was one i think in about 2009 or 10 called the children that was i think two two sort of families getting together over the weekend and i think i think there's some it seems like the children get something that turns them into kind of like sort of zombies or something it ends up like the adults fighting off the children and then um and obviously yeah you mentioned eden later that's a bit sort of like older kids and a bit more sort of social 
social economic kind of asboy type thuggery type stuff. Oh my god, that film disturbed me so much. It was really horrible. Yeah, yeah. Very well done. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of more like, like I said, the Hammer style. You know, that cr- kind of creepy, creepy children. I'm not suggesting that they do anything wrong in this, but obviously from the start, you do sense that there's something wrong with the kids, like they're playing up or. Yeah. misbehaving and, and of course you don't you don't you know what what i guess the mystery is is are they acting weird because something's something bad is happening to them because they don't they don't acting, want a new stepmom yeah or are they acting weird because they're doing bad stuff and um so i guess that that's the the, the mystery but there's that weird scene right near the beginning where they're playing in the garden and they've got geese it's like pet geese and they're chasing the geese and i'm not going to say what happens with the geese but that obviously sets the start of yeah that tension escalating between yeah. the couple and it, it's weird because that i mean the way he was behaving to me was like hang on a minute you should have sussed that he was odd, behaving oddly before maybe before you got to the house why didn't you sense that he there was something wrong with him but i guess that house kind of made him more yeah, Weird. and that, that's the thing. There's this kind of odd behaviours happening. And there's quite a few moments where, you know, and obviously these films work really well when it's an outsider and it's almost like jaw-dropping, like, I can't believe that just happened and everyone seems to think it's normal. And the way way some of the people are acting, and obviously it kind of escalates as well. I suppose it is demonstrating, you know, that, that tension between families and obviously families... If if you're not married to someone now, it's that, that kind of... The problems with history into interweaving with with yeah. the new family setup the dynamics yeah. completely and, changing and and, and the cent- the central character she you know how can she win in this situation because she she needs to be accepted and therefore needs to be accepted of what's going on and kind of really cool and fine so therefore can't really try and discipline or call people out call kids out when they're doing quite odd stuff because it probably doesn't feel like like her place yet i thought so she, she was she good kind of, yeah, she is good, and she, you know, she, and you know, she's a character who ends up being quite tormented, and you know, not. I'm not talking in necessarily in a, you know, we're not going down torture porn gory kind of way here. It's more, it's definitely psychological kind of like, you know, is soon in a situation where it's kind of like, what's going on here, and do I have the support that I thought I might have in this situation? Um, that's what, yeah, that's why I said it's kind of old school, and I, I quite like that because I love that feel of you know films that i grew up watching and i i suppose the you know the brothers that made this film that because i think one of them is producer one's director i'm sure that they felt the same way it's like these films that they grew up watching that weren't necessarily violent but they had a a, a sense of tension and a sense of you know, you know kind of like that chilling atmosphere rather than gore yeah it's in that british nice sort of niceties and the kids are kind of quite polite and it's quite a well to do you know it's not yeah. <laughs> it's not like going it's not like you know some some American horror where there's some backwoods kind of like sort of mutant family of like of hillbilly people who have inbred. There's not really any red flags here at all. No, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is not. There's no, no. leather face. Or... And thank God it's not the new the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which, as you know from our last discussion, I wasn't a fan of. <laughs> yeah, I liked it more than you did, but I, I, yeah, I'd like to watch it again. Actually. <laughs> I didn't realise until you posted that that was the first time you've ever done a one star on here. Is that it right? was? You claimed that f- that oh. one star review. <laughs> I, should, I should have managed it a bit more. I should have like really built up the moment where I revealed the one star. <laughs> I, feel really, I feel really mean that, but you know, I, I had my reasons at the time, and you know, you I did stay with it, Paul. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a really short film because we both commented about this when we were watching it. It's one hour, ten minutes, and that's with yeah. credits. So I'm guessing like an hour and five minutes in its entirety, yeah. which, again, I suppose could have worked as a TV episode. And that's where I'm kind of leaning more towards rather than a feature film that I would see at the cinema. I mean, yeah. I guess parts of it are cinematic. I'm not saying that it wasn't done well. But for me, it felt like a TV episode that would have worked as a shorter even shorter than one hour, 10 minutes. Or or for me, I think be expanded and be like a sort of TV thriller. I could very much see it as one of those sort of like ITV, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night things or a Channel 5 thing with, you know, Anna Friel or someone like that, that kind <laughs> of, you know, um, uh, or, you know, is it Kath- Kathleen Kelly used to be in Corrie or kind of oh, Sharan yeah. Jones, all those really great actresses who just do these, you know, Channel 5 and ITV just bang them out. I mean, that's the thing. It's what way do you go? And do you really go on for full gothic type horror and make it very cinematic? 
or do you go another direction and I guess perhaps for budgetary reasons and, and not being able to have the film at a bit of a longer length it does it just it then ultimately felt like it was a little bit suspended for me in terms of like it didn't quite then live up to the atmosphere at the beginning and I think a lot of that was to do with the sort of I guess the the, the resolution of the story absolutely yeah i was going to say the story was the main one of the main problems for me i don't think it was explored enough it could have perhaps been explored more but then i guess that you know like we were talking about you said about the constraints of a low budget film you you, there's only so much you can do i guess within that frame yeah and maybe that's one of the reasons you know we've talked before and i'm not necessarily such a fan of kind of everything being over explained and it's fine to have some ambiguity and whatever and i'm, I'm not no spoilers here it does come to that point where whatever kind of whether it's a, a sort of monster movie or a haunted house or a ghost film where you have this sort of reveal of the monster and it's almost like they they sort of sidestepped it in this and i kind of think that probably is a, a decision made because actually sometimes the monster and when i'm, I'm saying this I'm not giving anything well, I'm using that term quite broadly, but the source of the of the the menace is quite abstract and quite removed and it's only really alluded to rather than seen. It does mean you don't get that thing where like a lot of horror films where you then just get a crap puppet or something that's kind of like, you know, just looks ridiculous and then you're like, oh. Having said that, maybe a little bit too subtle and nuanced, because I kind of felt I wanted a bit more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, were you spooked by it? I mean, I shouldn't say this because the filmmakers are going to be horrified, (laughs) quite literally horrified that I'm going to say this, but there were a couple of laugh out loud moments for me, particularly a really funny headbutt moment, (laughs) which I can't really talk about in detail. (laughs) I don't think, I don't, I don't think saying there's laugh out loud moments is, is, um, is, is necessarily, it's, it's kind of sometimes when something shocking happens in film your response can be to laugh. It could be interpreted as almost a comic moment because it's just so over the top, but it is something that happens in the film. You're like, wow, it's... um." I guess I've never thought about that. Yeah, that's true. Um, the acting I thought was okay. I mean, particularly Ashling, um, Ashling Loftus, who's play, who plays Holly, the one of the main protagonists. He he was okay. He's normally great in stuff. I d- it was just jarring for me how his behaviour was quite odd in this, and she hadn't really picked up on that before, but again, it might be just because of that house. So... Uh, ultimately then I've kind of considered what you were talking about at the start of this review about the budget because I I hadn't really thought of how low the budget was to be honest obviously you know lengthwise I think you know maybe it could have worked as a TV thing rather than a film but then you know this is the debut feature as well which is something else I've considered so I'm probably going to go for three although it's probably a lower lower end of three because I I didn't love it yeah, I, I I would say the same. I think it's not. It, it doesn't have some of those things that that elevate it to be amazing. But also, there can be a lot of really naff, drab, British, low budget horror that's not very ambitious. And you know, this this certainly wasn't that. It's, it it was trying to be interesting. It had a really interesting setup. It did feel like people who got that whole old school horror thing. It didn't feel like it was somebody cashing in on horror as a genre. No, yeah, exactly. Not it was. It was very much a, a, a sort of situation based. What if this happened? And kind of, you know, you're we're kind of on the same journey as the pr- protagonist of fi- finding things out as it goes along. It's not unheard of. of sometimes there's also quite low budget stuff to then be picked up and remade. I don't know whether the story is that 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 unique. It, it's just def- definitely an, in- an interesting premise and pretty well carried out. Yeah, and it really taps into the horror of families as well, not necessarily a ghoul or a ghost or a monster. It's actually, you know, the horror of humanity and how a family dynamic can change and can be quite unsettling. So in that respect, I, I quite liked that element of it. As much as it was, it could have been longer, also, we all love a short film, don't we? Yeah, exactly. So it's Homebound. It comes out in cinemas on the 1st of April. I'd be interested to see who does go and see it at the cinema and who enjoys it at the cinema, because obviously a wide, big widescreen mm. experience... Um, Maybe that would, uh, you know, it would, it would look and feel better than on a small screen. I remember in bits of it now. There was also quite a quite a scary swimming pool scene as well, wasn't there? Oh yeah, I forgot Again, about that. Sort of more disturbing, scary than spooky, scary. And I think that's actually another thing they did quite well. Is there's some things that happen that aren't very nice, and they sustain them for quite a long time, and it makes it a lot more uncomfortable because it's almost like where you know you're the sort sort of stuff happening, and you're a bit like, surely someone should step in by now or someone should yeah. stop this should be and it's like oh god you know the the poor heroine's going through quite a lot of torment so yeah homebound check it out if you've seen it let us know thank you paul as always good to see you and thank you everybody for watching 
don't forget to leave a comment down below like and subscribe very important and share you've shared with all your friends paul and i'm eternally grateful all over social media <laughs> <laughs>